This lecture will be covering mini incision surgery. Hip resurfacing can be performed through one of several different approaches. Several studies around the world have proved the safety and efficacy of resurfacing procedures performed through these conventional approaches. However, if the procedure can be done safely through a minimal incision approach, then that would be more attractive. Therefore, Mr. Derek McMinn has developed the mini incision approach for this procedure. Here is an x-ray of a normal right hip. There is a clear joint space where there is sufficient cartilage in this joint. This is an x-ray of an arthritic left hip. The cartilage is worn and the joint space is produced. This is the same hip treated with a Birmingham hip resurfacing through a mini incision approach. By its nature, mini incision resurfacing arthroplasty of the hip is technically more difficult. As well as improvements being made to the surgical technique, the instruments have also been modified. They were adapted to aid in accessibility and flexibility in reaching the necessary parts through a mini incision. This is the old femoral alignment jig, which was in use through the conventional approach. The long arm of the jig had to reach the outer surface of the upper femur. In order to reach that point, a larger incision is needed. Modifications in the femoral alignment jig allow the new jig to be used through a smaller incision as the long arm of the jig can be anchored to the drop and turret crest. Once the pin and jig are in place, precise alignment of the jig will present the best position for the femoral component. Measurements are carried out on x-ray using component templates. The distance from the lesser trochanter to the midline of the femoral component stem is measured. This is noted for use in surgery. This measurement tells us where to place the pin for attachment of the jig. Here is a modified new BHR offset acetabular reamer, and this is the new BHR offset acetabular cup introducer. These instruments make it possible to prepare the acetabulum and seat the component through the mini incision. 2D positioning of both femoral head and acetabular components can be measured on plain x ray. Here we have the method of assessing the inclination angle of the acetabular cup. This angle is 41 degrees. The optimum angle is around 40 to 45 degrees. The acetabular cup positioning is also very important and there is only a small margin of error. If the cup angle is too small, the cup is closed and it could lead to impingement of the neck and there is also the risk of it becoming loose and failing. If the cup angle is too high, the cup is open and there is the potential for edge wear which reduces its survival. A study was carried out to evaluate the technical differences and possible effects of the mini incision and the conventional approach. A consecutive series of patients who underwent a Birmingham hip resurfacing through a mini incision procedure in 2004 was analysed. The results were then compared with different cohorts of patients who had a Birmingham hip resurfacing through the traditional approach. These are the acetabular cup inclination angles for the two groups. The mean values for the two groups are within the target range, although the range of data is wider in the traditional approach group. We also assessed radiographically the position of the femoral components. If the component is placed too varus, the uneven stresses from the head would fracture the neck. If placed too valgus, there is the high risk of notching in the neck and leading to a fracture. Precise positioning of the components is essential. Here we have an x-ray of an arthritic right hip and the other x-ray showing the Birmingham hip resurfacing component in situ. The femoral component is slightly notching the femoral neck and is inverse. Malpositioning of the components will have critical consequences. The first x-ray shows a fractured femoral neck due to the notching of the component. The other x-ray shows a revised hip to a metal metal modular head total hip replacement. The cup was stable and secure so it remains the same. As you can see the range of body mass index was very wide, one patient having a BMI of 48. The incision sizes had to be longer for larger patients, and so we can see a linear relationship. The mean incision length for the mini incision group was 11.8 centimeters. 77% of the incisions were between 9 and 11 centimeters. The mean operating times for both groups were quite similar. Blood loss was calculated using the preoperative and postoperative hematocrit values. There was no significant difference between the two groups. Length of stay in hospital was greater in the traditional approach group when compared with the mini incision group. One way of assessing soft tissue trauma is to measure the keratin kinase. 
A lower level indicates less invasive trauma. However, these two groups are not significantly different. A questionnaire was formed to assess the patient perception and gave critical feedback. 45 patients who had a Birmingham hip resurfacing through a traditional approach and who came back later for another mini incision Birmingham hip resurfacing on the contralateral side were asked to complete this questionnaire. 26 patients felt there was less pain following the mini incision procedure. 34 patients believed that their recovery from the mini incision procedure was faster than the traditional approach. 16 patients experienced less wound trouble, but the majority felt that there was no difference in the operative wounds. 32 patients were aware that the appearance of the scar was better and therefore more preferable. 39 out of 45 patients would happily recommend the mini incision procedure over the traditional approach. For patients, mini incision surgery is an attractive option when having a Birmingham hip resurfacing. The data from this study shows that with experience, mini incision surgery is as reliable as a traditional approach in terms of component positioning and patients show an overall preference in the mini incision procedure. It has many benefits such as a shorter skin incision and it also has the advantage of extending the incision if greater access is needed. However, there is also a steep learning curve for this procedure and component positioning should not be compromised. It should only be carried out by skilled surgeons with experience in resurfacing procedures and with the appropriate dedicated instruments. Thank you.